This episode of the Kill Innovations podcast is brought to you by listeners like you. You can become a supporter by visiting shop.philmckinney.com and making a contribution. Your support helps defray the cost to produce, host, and stream the show. As always, any profits are donated to charities such as hackingautism.org. I'm Phil McKinney, and welcome to Season 11 of the Kill Innovations Podcast, a show about ideas, creativity, and innovation. In the 1984 movie Dreamscape, starring Dennis Quaid and Christopher Plummer, government researchers had found a way to have people join another person's dream and then actively participate, or in some cases, disrupt it. The core of the movie is to use this newfound ability to do both good and evil. After I watched the movie, I became enthralled with the idea behind the concept of the film, lucid dreaming. Now, lucid dreaming happens when the dreamer is aware they are in a dream, while also being aware that what they are experiencing is not real life. Most people never experience it to the fullest, but some dreamers are able to take full advantage of lucid dreaming and control what they do and what happens around them. To many people and to me, it sounds like a lot of fun. But it's about much more than just fun. As a Wall Street Journal article explains, multiple studies have shown that frequent lucid dreamers are better at cognitive tasks that involve insight and thinking creatively. Intuitively, it makes sense. On countless occasions, I've woken up in the middle of the night with a faint memory of a great idea, but I could not quite grab it. Unfortunately, most people are like me and have a hard time realizing when they're dreaming and then being able to play it back when they're awake. Now, a few months ago, after reading up on the topic, I decided that I was going to do an experiment around lucid dreaming. Despite my best efforts, however, I found myself coasting through my dreams just as the same ways I always had, unable to take control or experiment with my surroundings, and needless to say, I got frustrated. Now, what was the problem? The web abounds with instructions, some more metaphysical than others, on how to get into the lucid dreaming game. The basics include getting into the habit of reality checking. So throughout your working day, such as looking at your hands so that you can recognize any changes when you are in a dream state, keeping a dream journal to get better at remembering your dreams, and then repeating all kinds of mantras before you go to sleep, such as, I will remember my dream tonight. Now, I tried all of these techniques but found that I was having only limited success. I continued to wake up with the ghost of an idea sliding from my mind, just out of reach. And after a few weeks of this, I decided to try a new technique, which has always worked great for me as a jumping off point when I feel stuck. And that is the Socratic method of using questions. Now, essentially, the Socratic method is about challenging your assumptions and asking yourself open-ended questions. Now, questions have a unique power. When you're asked a question, you really can't stop yourself from answering it. For example, if I ask you what is half of 13, now I've paused, now you've calculated the answer, and now you're back listening to me. Now you didn't consciously tell yourself to solve the calculation, your brain just did it, came up with the answer of six and a half, all on its own. So I asked myself, could I frame a question just prior to going to sleep And will my subconscious actively try to answer it? And the answer after experiments is yes. I was gradually able to take more and more control in my dreaming life, using my questions as a catalyst. Once I was able to be consistent in my lucid dreaming, the opportunities were endless. I saw new solutions to all problems and was able to grab some of those great ideas floating around in my subconscious that had been so elusive before. Now, did it work every time and every day? No. What I found was is that the questions kind of hung around and answers would come to me at some point in the future. Now, lucid dreaming can be a great way to gain insight into problems you face during your waking life and spur your personal creativity to new heights. And like everything in life, success often comes down to asking the right questions. By breaking down the barriers between your unconscious and subconscious states, Your mind is more free to challenge your own assumptions and answer your own questions in creative ways. 
So what is that one question you would love to have an answer for? My advice? Sleep on it. If you enjoyed today's show, you can subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, YouTube, Spreaker, or wherever you find your favorite podcast. You can find all the links and resources from this episode, along with every other episode going back to 2005 at philmckinney.com. Just click on podcast. I would love to hear your feedback, such as your thoughts on the new format for the show, topics you would like covered, or any questions you might have. Ping me on Twitter at philmckinney, all one word, or on LinkedIn or Facebook. You can find links to where I hang out on social media at philmckinney.com. And as always, thanks for listening.